Hey guys, welcome to our trip to Carlsbad Caverns. The paved entrance road is interesting, but it is seven miles long, so we sped up this part just a little bit. Just wanted to give you an idea of how it looked. We always like to go to the visitor center first if we can, and this was no exception. This is a great place to get all the information you need. There are two options for entering the caverns. One way is to take the elevator, which goes down 754 feet. The other option is to hike the natural entrance. All of this information is posted at the ticket desk. You will have to purchase self-guided tour reservations, also known as timed entry tickets, for $1 per ticket. These must be purchased online or by calling them prior to arrival. You will also have to pay a park entrance fee or present a valid National Park Pass upon arrival. You must still reserve an entry time beforehand. Check out recreation.gov or the National Park Service app for more information. We use that NPS app all the time. You'll also find a list of all the rules and guidelines for what you can and can't bring into the caves, what to wear, and other great resources. Just a little bit of information about the caves. There are 120 caves known at this time, with 180 total miles of known passages and rooms. These numbers change as more exploration continues. The big room is 8.2 acres, which is larger than six football fields, and it's the largest readily accessible cave chamber in North America and the 22nd largest cave chamber in the world. This place is massive. The park gets about 500,000 visitors each year. Since 1924, the park has had over 44 million visitors. One of the most important rules in the caves is that you are not allowed to touch any of the structures because the oils in your skin can damage them. Okay, back to the options for entering the caverns. It's a big decision, so make sure you give it some thought. I didn't have all the facts and waited until I got there to decide. We decided to hike in and take the elevator out. I'm glad we did it this way, but I'm out of shape and it was pretty grueling. We hiked the steep one and a quarter mile paved trail, which leads into the spectacular one and a quarter mile big room trail. The hike is equivalent to walking down a 75 story building. The average cave temperature is 56 degrees with 90% humidity year round, so bring a light jacket. Also, you need to be aware that there is definitely an unusual smell, so be prepared. The GoPro doesn't work well in low light situations, so we used our cell phones to take photos. To help with perspective, we included some of the handrails in the photos. The handrails run about waist high along the walking trails throughout most of the caverns. It's hard to tell just how massive these caverns really are. Make sure you check out the Bat Flight Amphitheater. This was the only access to the caverns before the elevators were installed in the 1930s. If you're there before late May, you can watch the bats exit the cavern nightly from the time they return from migration, which is usually mid to late April. The bat flight program begins Memorial Day weekend. The program is free and continues each weekend through October. No reservations are required and start time changes as the summer progresses. An evening ranger will give you information about the bats prior to their flight. 